in, checking connections. We are now officially live on YouTube, on TikTok, and I think we're live on Instagram as well. Sorry about the light, guys. It's a little little bright, but welcome back to, hang on, guys, we might need help here. There we go. Welcome back to Tuesdays with me, with a late, anytime I do this from a the clinic, there's always a little bit of a crapshoot with when I'm going to be able to make it out of a room. So I am sorry if you've been waiting for me to go live and it took me a second to be on here. But I hope everybody is doing well and ready to talk about some stuff. And before we do, remember, I love knowing where all of you are from and where you're coming in from. And then if you do have questions, feel free to post your questions. I'll talk for a couple minutes and then I love answering any of the questions that you've got going on. A couple of housekeeping things. A reminder that the Superwoman Circle is still alive and healthy and functioning. And this month we are tackling a couple of topics. So you guys should definitely join. We're tackling PCOS, fertility, and insulin resistance. And in your materials, if you're a part of the circle, there is a checklist to help you understand if you possibly do or do not have insulin resistance. So definitely check those materials out. It can help with uh, helping you sort through what's happening from there. Hello, Chicago. I know who that is. Good to see you there. So uh, lots going on in the circle. We'll have a webinar on the 18th, which is next week. And then we will do our coaching session the following Tuesday at eight o'clock. So definitely join the circle. It's been a fun community, an opportunity to share your thoughts and really dig into what's going on with you, but also to learn from one another. And that's really how we all get better. All right. So that's everything happening in the circle this weekend. I am actually headed out to LA. I'm super excited about that. I will be talking about all things hormones for goop. I don't know if anybody's going to be there or if we've got any LA folks joining us today, but if you're in the area, if you're in the California area and in LA, please join us. I think I think there's still tickets available, but head on over to the Goop site and check it out. But we will be talking all things hormones and really diving into this conversation, which continues to baffle everybody. So speaking of which, I posted this morning because I was scrolling, as I'm sure we all do, and found uh, a couple of clips on really uh, Oprah digging into the menopause conversation, right? Did you guys see some of the coverage she's been doing on menopause? It's been on Oprah Daily. It's been on the OWN Network as well, really talking about, you know, menopause, what her first symptoms were. And I don't know if you guys know this or not. I've never heard her talk about this before. So that's what's so interesting to me. But one of her earliest symptoms of menopause were, uh, was heart palpitations. So a cardiovascular symptom, right? And many people think, okay, something's wrong with my heart. I need to go to the heart doctor. But with her, you know, like many of the patients I see right here at Center Spring MD, some of their earliest symptoms are actually, you know, cardiovascular symptoms, rheumatological symptoms, areas that are not what we typically think of as hormone symptoms. And we see this all the time, where as women lose, and men too, by the way, as men lose testosterone and women lose estrogen and progesterone, we understand that there are more arrhythmias, more sort of dysfunction with their heart. So they'll have everything from new onset AFib to heart palpitations to altered heart beats. I mean, it's really bizarre, but this hormone issue is very real for women and brings about symptoms that they often did not expect. Now, back to today's post where Oprah had a guest on, a physician on talking about HRT. There is so much confusion about HRT, AKA hormone replacement therapy. You hear some people in this camp of, it's bad, all hormones are bad, don't go on anything. And I see so much fear in patients when they're coming in here and wanting to know whether they should or should not go on HRT. And on the other extreme, you've got people doing pellets and mega doses of hormones and thinking that that's okay because they read maybe in a book or something like that, that you're supposed to have a period going into your 80s and you need to be on mega doses of testosterone and that's the secret of youth and that's the secret to not age. Well, I would say neither camp is correct. I think the sweet spot is kind of in the middle and that happy spot is where we understand that yes, we need hormones. We need to stop engaging in conversations that say we don't need hormones. We absolutely do need them. 
but do we need them at mega doses? No. And especially if you're from a genetic pool where it's very difficult to break estrogen down, right? So you might have within your family, for example, you might have MTHFR, you might have COMT, you might have any of those SNPs is what we call them, these genetic SNPs, in the CYP1B1 family, all of those are genetics that don't really break estrogen down very well. On the flip side, you might have stuff that really compromises the liver. So there's a whole another set of stuff right around there. So there's SOD and NAD and all this other stuff that is associated with the liver not being able to function well. So you give somebody like that mega doses of hormones, whether it's a pellet or whether it's a really high dose synthetic estrogen patch, they don't do well either. So what we have to do is really apply the East-West philosophy to hormone balancing. So that means we do need to think about gut health and liver health, because that's how we break hormones down. That's how we detox hormones. And until that foundation is laid, you really honestly shouldn't be talking about HRT at all. So what's your gut doing? You know, do you have food allergies? Do you have food intolerances? What's the bacteria in your gut? You know, what's happening there? Are you breaking fats down effectively? That's something that we need to be talking about over and over again because fat ultimately is the building block of hormones and many people are having that issue as they go into a hormone shift. So understanding what your gut's doing, understanding what your liver is doing. Are you detoxing? Are you drinking 10 to 12 drinks of alcohol every week? Well, you, that's too much. And even a more recent study talked about even four drinks might be too much. So really lowering all your toxins, so to speak, lowering down the alcohol you're getting, the number of prescription medications, the toxins you're getting, all of that is weighing on the health of the liver. So we wanna make sure we're helping the liver do its job when it comes to hormones and hormone balancing. All right, so if you've accomplished the gut piece and the liver piece, then HRT is okay. Hormone replacement therapy. And it's interesting because the clip I posted was talking about uh, progestin and estrogen. Now, progestin is synthetic progesterone. So I, too, have an issue with synthetic progesterone. Bioidentical progesterone, on the other hand, works with the body. It's very gentle, works with the body, has done amazing things for our patients. Same with bioidentical estrogen. So you want to work with hormones that are kind of identical to what we have or what we make because they're gonna work with the body and not work against it. So yes, we need our estrogen and yes, we need progesterone, but we need small amounts and they need to be bioidentical and then they need to be monitored, meaning we need to understand what your body's doing with that. So that's where my hormone guide is both in the Instagram shop and also in on my website, if you go to drtaz.com and it gives you kind of what to check and then the levels that are appropriate appropriate for each of those hormones. All right, so just follow those and hopefully that will give you an understanding. And look, if you need help with this, that's what the Superwoman Circle is all about. If you're just completely confused and you don't know where to go with this conversation, you really don't know where to start, well then that's what we've created the Superwoman Circle for and we want you to join. And really that way we can sit there and dig into a lot of the stuff and tease it out and really make it applicable to you. So that's my take on HRT and what I'm thinking with hormone replacement therapy. And as we head into our 40s and our 50s, you know, where we're thinking about HRT, I don't want you guys to be scared. I want you to have this idea in mind. Now, for those of you that are younger, you might be in your teens and your 20s and your early 30s. Knowing your hormones is still really important. I was actually on bioidentical progesterone in my 20s when I was having my health issues. And that in turn was important for me in terms of balancing my health, restoring my sleep, getting all the other hormones to behave in the way that they were supposed to. So HRT is a conversation not just for folks later in life, it's even for those of us that are having hormone shifts in our teens and 20s and 30s after children. There's so many different places that folks shift all the time. So keep that in mind as you're thinking through what the next steps are for you, what the next decision is for you. All right, I'm gonna stop there and let's start to take a few questions and see what's on your mind. But that's definitely what was on my mind today. Um, we have one question. How do you feel about supplementing with Shatavari? Oh my gosh, so Shatavari is an Ayurvedic herb. I love it. Shatavari indirectly boosts 
glutathione levels. And hopefully if you've been following me, you guys all know what glutathione is. It's an antioxidant. It improves egg quality. It helps the liver with detoxification. It was thought to be a tonic in Ayurveda where it really just improved energy. So I love it. And so Shathbury, I usually say 500 milligrams a day. You can up it to twice a day and pair that. If you're worried about egg quality, by the way, pair that with glutathione to really help boost egg quality and improve sort of your fertility success. Awesome. And then um, this is from your post earlier today that yeah. I thought was super interesting. My biggest question is why are we putting something, hormones, back into our body when our body decides to, it's done with them? They're no longer needed. Um, we don't need, we don't, sorry, I'm going to, um, we have young girls in puberty that have too much estrogen and then put them on estrogen reducing drugs. Um, basically saying, shouldn't it be the same at the end of... Got it. Okay, so this question is about why even go on hormones when your body's done with hormones. Here's the deal. And as, a, as women, and I would even include men in this, we used to live till 50, maybe 60. And losing your hormones and not having hormones by 45, 50, and maybe having 10 years or so of the space of not having hormones was tolerable or okay. However, nowadays women and men are living into their 80s and 90s. And the fallout from not having hormones is the medical burden when it comes to brain health, bone health, skin health, hair health, your lipids, your cardiometabolic health. That burden of disease is far greater and costs much more to each of you than the burden of going on hormones. So that's why we're having a hormone conversation because just because your hormones are fading away does not mean we lie back and accept it because today we have 30 additional, 40 additional years to live. And who wants to live without energy and vitality and feeling their best? Or who wants to live sick? What's the point of that? So there are answers and there are solutions and we have to shift this mentality. Let's go back to the girls you mentioned and their teenage years. They shouldn't be on estrogen blockers. They should be laying a foundation for their gut and liver health so that their hormones naturally balance back out and they're not swinging into major hormone shifts. So we've got it wrong on both ends and that's why hormone shifts are a passion of mine. I had to deal with them in my teens and 20s and ultimately made me super sick, but I was able to recover. And of course, now as I'm in my 50s, again, something I need to be cognizant of, but honestly, I feel really great because I'm on top of what's happening with all of this. It's not true for the majority of folks out there. They're given one-stop blanket solutions. This is the way it is. Go on the pill. Sorry, you're in menopause. You're normal. You're aging. This is, you know, this is okay. We can't take those answers anymore. It's completely unacceptable. All right, sorry, go ahead. No, I loved it. It was so interesting. Um, would love to hear more about just taking estrogen, the benefits and side effects, as well as the best form to take. Thank you. Okay, so taking estrogen for me is taking bioidentical estrogen. And I prefer creams over pills because we don't want you to have to metabolize estrogen within the liver, right? We usually need more or we have to do more and we don't want to do more necessarily. We want to keep doses kind of lower. Um, so I usually like pills or patches. There are dissolvables as well. And then of course there are the estrogen pills, which is usually my last resort. I prefer bioidentical estrogen, meaning it's the estrogen that looks kind of like your estrogen. Those usually work the best with the body and don't drive up estrone, which is kind of the toxic estrogen, the estrogen that makes us sick, the estrogen that maybe gives you the heavy breasts and the migraines and all the other business. Um, so that's the type of estrogen that I like. Again, you want to stay kind of in a neutral level. We don't want mega doses of anything. And you don't want your circulating estradiol, so this is how you know you're on the right dose. We don't want a circulating estradiol to be below 50 or over 200. And we don't want estrone, which is the storage form of estrogen, to go over 150 or so. So that's some of how we can gauge and understand you know, what's happening and how, how your body is responding to estrogen. Um, one question, there's a few questions about HRT and cancer. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. What is the link? Is there a natural way to get estrogen? Yeah, so let's talk about HRT and cancer. That study 
the one you're referring to probably was the Women's Health Initiative that was done on women that were post-menopausal. So most of those women were in their 70s, not in their 40s and 50s or 60s even, and they were given Premarin, which is estrogen from horse urine. There was a higher cancer risk in those women for sure. They were getting an estrogen that does not mimic our own. The body was seeing, as it, seeing it as foreign. And at 70, if their gut and liver health hadn't been handled, then of course they're not gonna be able to metabolize that. Let's flip and talk about families with a history of breast cancer, right? So you're storing estrogen. They probably have the genetics to hold on to estrogen, to store estrogen. So there's this estrogen fear. Or you may have had an estrogen positive breast cancer. So taking estrogen should be questioned, absolutely. Does your body metabolize estrogen effectively? Well, here's what we have to do. We have to support the body in that process of estrogen metabolism. So we can give it estrogen, but you can only do spit doses, right? Half a milligram, quarter of a milligram. Do a bioidentical, do it a couple days a week, not in heavy handed doses where you're taking it over and over again every single day without a break. And at the same time, and by the way, we do all this day in and day out right here at Center Spring MD. So that's where I'm speaking from, right? It's just working with patients. It's now 14, 15 years, almost 30, 35,000 patients. So this is what we've seen. So these teeny tiny doses, right? Where we're monitoring estrone, estradiol levels we know if a patient's going to tolerate estrogen or not tolerate estrogen. So again, it's a personalized conversation for you based on your genetics. Now, if I take that same, same dosing of estrogen and I give it to somebody who doesn't have all these estrogen issues, they're gonna be like, I didn't get a result. So they may actually need a little bit more. So it's again, that's why I don't like pellets, that's why I don't like one size fits all, because you are you and you come with unique chemistry. And we have to understand how your body is handling everything in your environment, including your hormones. Okay, we have one question about um, the risk of strokes. I thought that estrogen increased risk of, risk of strokes for those who suffer migraines and similar conditions, which is the reason why the mini pill exists. Has this changed? So high dose estrogen, high dose synthetic estrogen, estrogen that's not metabolized, yes, increases the risk of strokes and clotting disorders. Low dose estrogen, right, mini pill, bioidentical, baby doses of patches, does not increase the risk of strokes. So again, it's weighing where you are with your dosing. I think that's probably the main idea here. It's amount and dosing that's critical for different folks. At the same time, we know when we take estrogen away, right? This is playing devil's advocate here. No estrogen, heart palpitations, arrhythmias, all these other heart symptoms. So the, the happy balance, right? The medium, the, the merging of medicine, the east-west way, that's where we want to be. And that's where we need to focus. And then we have a question. Um, I'd love to know how hormones affect longevity and overall health. Hormones and longevity and overall health. I think hormones are a really important uh, part of the equation when we're talking anti-aging. I think hormones are a really important part of a longevity equation. Here's why. The depletion of estrogen and the depletion of progesterone and for all the men, depletion of testosterone impacts brain health, affects insulin or blood sugar levels, right? What does that do? That creates a cognitive load that we are now calling dementia and Alzheimer's and all this other stuff. The milder versions of, of all of those are there, of course. Creates a cardiovascular load, because remember, as insulin goes up, sugar levels go up, belly fat goes up, inflammation goes up. So now we have a body burden of high cholesterol, high lipids, high blood sugar, you're on diabetes medicines, you're on cholesterol medications, you're on heart medications, you're on blood pressure medications, right? So again, managing all of this and preventing this burden of cardiometabolic disease and managing sort of your energy and vitality go hand in hand with hormone health. Many people say, well, you know, just eat less and you'll manage the inflammatory burden and the insulin burden. Partly true. Have you ever tried to eat less when your progesterone's crashing or your estrogen's crashing or your testosterone's in the toilet? You're just constantly searching for energy. You're desperate for energy. So you're gonna reach for the coffee, you're gonna reach for sugar, you're gonna reach for chips, you're gonna do what I call the gateway drugs to make us feel good fast because we don't have any hormones that are kind of keeping us at a steady state. And so we put people 
in this catch-22, like, eat less, you know, get your willpower on, you know, take, uh, you know, uh, Wegovy or Majorna or Ozempic, it's a solution for everything, but what about the hormone component that drives our behavior, and that behavior in turn is determining how we feel. So it's an important part of a longevity conversation and an anti-aging conversation. And I think it's something that we've got to start, you know, bringing to the table and stop being afraid of. We'll talk about everything else, but we don't seem to want to talk about hormones. All right, I think we have time for maybe one or two more and then we need to stop, sorry. So I think that actually wrapped up the big questions for today. We just have a few people saying we need more education on this topic and super excited about this information. Well, we're going to stay on it for sure, and I'll continue to post, if it's helpful, like research articles that support this, the East-West philosophy around this, you know, what you should be thinking of as you have these conversations with your providers around hormones and hormone replacement. But what you don't want to do, no matter how old you are and where you are, male, female, what you don't want to do is assume you don't need hormones because that's what you've been told. I would say if you're a woman, know your estrogen and progesterone levels. If you're a man, know your testosterone levels. If you are falling below these levels, you know, kind of some of these absolutes that I've uh, recommended. And by the way, my recommendation from for testosterone is nobody should be under about 400 for men, not for women, for men. So if you're a you know, male and you're listening to this and you're falling below 400, how are you gonna manage your lipids and your heart health and your weight and all this other stuff? So again, know your numbers, know where you are. I'll continue to post, we'll continue to have this debate, but you know, nobody deserves to walk around not feeling good. I think at the end of the day, please remember that, that we are here to feel good and that we are here to be in our power and in our energy and we can't let these things block us and change our life decisions. I mean, it's almost like that study that said the birth control pill changed who you're attracted to. Imagine what's happening when we're hormone depleted. How are we behaving? How are we acting? Like, how are we treating the people in our family or around us? It de- there's a definite fallout to this. So I encourage you guys to stay on it, and I'll stay on it as well, and we'll continue to have these conversations. All right, I'll shut up now. I will see you guys on, hopefully, in my Superwoman Circle, right? That's uh, next Tuesday will be the webinar. The link is in my bio to join, and the coaching session will be April 25th. If you're in L.A., please come to the Goop seminar. I would love to meet you and see you there. I'm flying out there on Thursday. And just continue to stay. Uh, Let me know. Like, let me know what you want to hear about. Let me know what's interesting. And we'll stay on it. We've got all kinds of tools for you guys, too. Check out our Dr. Taz shop. We've got new wellness boxes to help with energy and beauty and hormone balance. So you can check those out. And then... Don't forget that we have an Amazon storefront now. So people are always asking me, what do you use at home? And what do you use in your bathroom? Well, now you know I'm dumping it all in my Amazon storefront. So you can check all that out there as well. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Have a great Tuesday and uh, stay motivated, focused, and in your power. Take care.